in the research, it's like a prominent theme that comes up that you have this strict rule about people sitting on your bed. Can you yeah. can you tell this rule and then I'll ask my question? Oh God, the world is fucking disgusting, people. <laughs> it is filthy. New York is revolting, oh, yeah. and I love New York. And I remember when I was on uh, Jimmy Fallon, mean to brag, but I was on Jimmy. <laughs> <laughs> was it like when I was on Jimmy Fallon? Mean to brag. I'm curious about <laughs> which which way it was like because the times. <laughs> I've been on Jimmy Fallon. It has felt one kind of way. Have you been more than once? I went for the first time in 2000. Well, now this is like real. I'm, I'm yeah, trying to think of when it was. 2008. I'm bored. Okay. I was trying to get <laughs> yeah. That joke went on too long. See, this is why I'm not a stand up. This is why I'm not. You got to try it out. No, but I remember I was on Fallon. I was making jokes about how uh, New York is dirty and like. Some people on Twitter got so mad. They were oh, like, really? how dare you talk about New York this way? And I'm like, because it's fucking disgusting. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What are we talking were those people about? not from New York? And they live in New York <laughs> and they're like, it's amazing. I'm like, it's an amazing city, but yeah, it is dirty. Yeah. It's dirty. so lick, dirty. Lick your shoe right yeah. now, <laughs> oh, <laughs> sir. Yeah. Um, I made a dumb joke about being on Fallon. Oh, uh, sitting on, yeah. So yeah. my parents were very strict about like cleanliness. Like they like really kept a clean house. And, mm-hmm. like, whenever my brother and I came home, they were like, you smell like outside. Like, change your clothes. <laughs> smell like, like outside. Yeah. <laughs> change your clothes. Get together. So that lesson sort of stuck with me. And I remember when I was in college, uh, in my dorm room, you know, I got my room essentials bedding from Target. <laughs> mm-hmm. I felt very fancy. <laughs> and, like, I didn't want people, like, sitting on my bed. So I'd be like, you could sit, like, on the—you could have, like, one ass cheek, like, on the <laughs> corner— but the other ass cheek has to like tangle off. <laughs> Did people respect it? P- a, people respected. There was one person who was so fucking wild, and mm. this was a guy that I liked, and we had the same taste in movies. <laughs> yeah. Honestly, being being a college age person is just such a waste of. You're just mm. so fu- you're such a fucking idiot. But <laughs> I, so you're like just really potential. Like like you like bullshit. But he came over and he sat on my pillow. <gasps> And I didn't say anything because I was like, I like him so much. Mm. But this movie's three hours. And I was like, <laughs> truly trying to like have fun. But my type A was like. <laughs> she like burned the pillowcase. Yeah, I left. mean, I did. I was like, this room essentials has got to go. Um, but that is a thing where I've had yeah. friends from college who will be like, oh, yeah, I remember like you're no, like no outside clothes in the bed rule. And I'm like, is that the coolest thing you remember about me <laughs> from college? <laughs> Is that I don't want dirty <laughs> Levi's on my bed? <laughs> okay, so you yeah. have said there's a small, very small group of people who would be allowed to sit on your bed with outside clothes, like Stephen Colbert, he Michael could. B. Jordan, yeah, Penn Badgley, yay or nay? I'm going to say Penn, of course. We've been through so much it. today. <laughs> You're on the list. Yeah. That's an exclusive list to be on. That's nice. great. What about okay. dogs? Oh. I am not an animal person. I don't okay. mind them, but I, I feel like it's such a responsibility. And also, well, yeah, like, yeah. do you have dogs? I do, but I'm he with doesn't you on like the that. But yeah, he, I feel <laughs> like he's so in your camp. Much. I, uh, yeah. it, it is, well, it's no, a lot. I actually love them enough to be like, you know what? This is a lot of work, and I think we'd both be happier if we just, it's not you, <laughs> Yeah, that's, like, that's the way that, That's the way that everything loves it's, to be loved. Yeah. <laughs> in that way that it's like, I could do without you. <laughs> <laughs> I think we'd both be better off. You in the wild, <laughs> eventually dead, <laughs> me living At my home, long life yeah. without having to come home to walk you. Yeah. And you're upset. Yeah. I mean, seriously. Every time they go inside, we're both upset. <laughs> you know? And we're past like that phase, level. but like everybody goes through that phase, and you have to think. Every time they go inside, we both lose. Oh. <laughs> so. so that's twice a day I'm losing. Let's talk about your illustrious career. Oh, yeah. my I feel like you've already touched on First it, career question I have for you. Okay. Have you met Viola Davis yet? I haven't. You haven't? We have not, not yet. been in the same circles for some reason. We've mm-hmm. never met. I have to say, I thought maybe... No. Can we get Beth in here? Yeah, like, can we bring make it Viola? Yeah. <laughs> My publicist, Beth, where's Viola? She's supposed to surprise me for this podcast. That's the yeah, yeah, normal yeah, that, that was where yeah. she comes in. <laughs> <laughs> this is, uh, we're a number one or number two podcast here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, but I've been managed to meet a lot of like wonderful 
people along the way. Like I got to moderate um, Michelle Obama's book tour, which yeah. was like so unreal. It was like yeah. the coolest yeah. thing. Wow. She, I did it five times. It what was, was that like? Wow. It was, um, well, first of all, it's so wild because it feels like her book was a fever dream because she was selling out arenas wow. to talk about a book, which yeah. Yeah. never happens. Happen. Yeah. That yeah. never happens. Wow. So you're already like, this is a once in a like lifetime thing that's not going to come along. And like everyone there was like so excited to like hear from her and She's so smart and funny. She always just has, like, stories, like, ready to go. I mm. feel like she tracks far better than her husband at this point. Yeah. Like, far is maybe extreme. <laughs> but people she love tra- her. Like, you yeah. just, you just, yeah. What's yeah. not to love? Yeah. So the first night, um, I remember I got, like, this really cute outfit. And um, by the end of the night when I had to stand up and we were, like, doing, like, our bow to the stage, like, my shoes were full of sweat because I just was so yeah. nervous about like wow. like I you know I interview people a lot but I'm like no, interviewing someone in front of 20,000 people like mm-hmm. you don't want to fuck it up yeah, and it's her yeah you don't want to be like the, the person who sucks at interviewing Michelle Obama so I was really nervous the first time but then after that it was just sort of like she's so easy to talk to you just send the questions ahead of time like this is sort mm-hmm. of like the you know the theme for the night and like she was game and down and it was so cool what she's was great. the most unexpected thing about her for you I think the most unexpected thing is just sort of like she is, and I know it sounds lame, but it's like she is kind of still down to earth, which you're not always Mm. sure someone when Uh, they're that famous. I have to say that was what I was thinking. Like she's a rare sort of icon. However, whoever it is that ever gets there, however it happens, it's rare. Yeah. And I mean, to have any kind of space in your life to be a human? Yeah. yeah. How on mm-hmm. earth? How on earth? Yeah. There's yeah. not a space she goes into. Yeah. Not a single space she goes into where she doesn't completely like change the makeup of the room. You That's know? So That's true. exhausting. Yeah. It's exhausting. And I think, you know, like she never wanted to be famous. You know what I mean? Right. Like even myself, like deep down, like I was a writer, but I probably like wanted to be a performer, but was like too afraid to admit it to myself. Mm. You know what I mean? Right. So there was always some sort of like, I want a little bit of attention on me, but like she never really wanted that. Like she didn't want him to go into politics initially. So I think wow. it's a, I think her fame is probably different because it's like, this is cool. This is nice. I'm going to use it for good. Cause I'm not like desperate to be the, like I'm not a Kardashian. You know, mm-hmm. I'm not, I'm not a Kardashian. <laughs> I'm not like trying to constantly be like yeah. front of everyone's minds. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So yeah, she's she's cool. That's like amazing. Her. That's yeah. amazing. You had that experience. Yeah. Speaking of like setting boundaries and having to like have your life kind of exposed as a comedian, I think you do have to. You know, you have to plumb your own life for stories, and you have to be kind of vulnerable, maybe self-deprecating depending on what type of comedy you're going for. What's that like for you? Is there anything that you try to keep sacred? Is there a space where you can go to kind of shut off? Mm. Yeah, I mean, I think I've been doing comedy for 15 years now. So I think there's, A, just like a level of confidence that I have just in myself as a person, not even as like a performer. And then I think I definitely do want to keep more things to myself, like, I like being vulnerable and sharing stories and blah, blah, blah. But, like, with my last relationship, we were, like, so much online. And, like, mm-hmm. it was really fun to, like, do, like, IG Lives and all this stuff together. But mm-hmm. then, like, you know, we like bro- I, like, broke up with him. Mm-hmm. And I was like, huh, this is so embarrassing. Mm-hmm. Um, because, you know, you, like, brought all this stuff and you're like, oh, he's my soulmate. And yeah. then you're like. Never say soulmate. I know. I fucked up, Pen. I fucked up. Now you know. Now you know. It's true. Yeah. It's true. But then, yeah. Yeah. So going forward, I think, like, whoever I date that would be, like, on the low low. And I probably, Mm, like, won't post about them. No. Yeah. That totally makes sense. Yeah. So Michael B. Jordan, it's totally (laughs) totally (laughs) fine to date me. (laughs) I won't tell anyone. (laughs) Can I read you something that you've said? Yes. Okay. Oh God! What is this? <laughs> I know people. This, this can be said. a dreaded moment, but I, I, there's a question here. Okay. Okay. So you said, I think we're taught to place too much emphasis on the outside no rather than on ourselves. If someone says no to you, you don't have to say no to yourself. You can say yes to yourself. You can say, I'm going to go off and do my own thing because people always catch up. It may take a while, but people always catch up. I think that's so great for especially our younger listeners to hear. 
when did you develop this mindset? And do you have an example of a no that became where someone actually caught up? Oh, my God. That's the, the amount of rejection. I'm sure you're in the same, not in the same boat as me, but, you know, like people think they see you on like your shows mm-hmm. and you get the podcast and like, oh, Penn's just thriving. It's just yes, yes, yes. And you're like. No, there's some fucking no's in here, too. Oh, lots yeah. of no's. So yeah. many, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> we have a company together. It's like lots of no's. Yeah. It's yeah. so much rejection. Yeah. It's yeah, so it much. Is. We can't get Viola Davis on here. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> but there's so much that goes into it. And so I always tell people, there are, here's one, I think what I say about myself is like, there are some people who like, for whatever, like, Everything has just come together where people just get them Mm. and they can just get all the things that they like. I'm never going to be a person where like people are desperate to work with me, Mm. but, you know, I can like create my own stuff. And, you know, when Jessica and I started Two Dope Queens, like, first of all, I was just still a struggling comic. I think I was like maybe seven years into stand up, maybe eight when I when we started the podcast and we really just started because we're like, well, a lot of like, you know, women, people of color, people from the queer community, like aren't getting on these late night shows. Mm-hmm. So we'll just like do our own thing. Um, and we never expected to take off the way that it did. Like we mm. were just truly doing it because it was fun. And then I was like, I think this could live on HBO. And so we were able to, to get it to that place. And it was so cool mm. to create something that was proven because I've definitely had, I won't say the the, the festival, Um but there's a big a comedy festival that's important, so you can kind of figure out which one I'm talking about. That's the one name you're not going to say? Yeah. <laughs> Come on. Let's call, right, it, let's on. call it the Brian Festival. Yeah, the Brian <laughs> Festival. Um, and um, I've been trying for years to, like, get on this showcase because it's, mm-hmm. it's just supposed to, like, open up your career. And they told my manager at the time that they don't think I have what it takes to make it in comedy. Oh. And I'm... When I heard that, I was like, you're so fucking dumb. Mm -hmm. Like, I was just like, you are so dumb. Like, you don't know who's going to make it, who's not going to make it. And I always feel like whenever I get those rejections, it's always like um, like Michael Jordan in The Last Dance, where he's just like, okay, okay. And then just Mm -hmm. use that as fuel to, like, just prove people wrong. And so I think every, every step of the way, like, with my first book— only one publisher wanted it because everyone else was like, this won't sell. Mm. It's a black author. It's not really relatable. Like, just all this shit. And this was, we sold it in 2015. 2015, wow. people were like, this book won't sell because it's written by a black woman. And oh then. That was your first one. My first one. And that's Everything's Trash? Or? Oh, no, you can't yeah. touch my hair. Oh, yeah. that's right. Mm. Okay. Yeah. And then it came out, was on the bestsellers list, New York Times bestsellers list for two weeks. And then my lit agent, Robert, had some people who have rejected my proposal, they email, they're like, why didn't you send us this book? <gasps> no. We would have loved to have published I this book. That. And he goes, I did. <laughs> no, and this know? is what you said. Yeah, wow. And so wow. it was just such cool vindication mm-hmm. where I'm just like, the gatekeepers don't really know what they're talking about. No, they don't, because they're not the ones who are doing it. Can you cup the microphone and say that again? The gatekeepers don't really know what they're talking about. (laughs) But they don't. So they they act like they're, you know, they could could see it all because they got to justify their jobs. But I'm just always like, if you just sort of give yourself the permission and just keep creating, like some some stuff is going to happen. You're going to break through. And like you just take the nose and stride and see what you can learn with from them and then just keep doing it. It's hard, but totally, yeah. You know, yeah. 